you can get a tyranny of the word then. Because whereas originally the word made everybody free of, a, of authority. So that's why in America, you, out in the frontier, you had the, the book on everyone's table. The book was the final determinant. Now, you didn't question the book. Because the book was what? The word of God. That's why we professors get into trouble with fundamentalist minded people because we go around saying, well, God made a mistake here, made a mistake there, uh, <laughs> screwed up in this passage, messed this passage up, and so on. So they don't like that kind of approach. So that gets into, because it's undermining their authority principle. But originally I think their authority principle was very noble and um, uh, uh, liberal in the sense that uh, they said each man is his own king. Man, I'm sorry we didn't include women here, but at that time women weren't as independent-minded and in a situation as they are today, as you know. I mean, uh, uh, look at the Mormon situation in you know, the last century, and you can see that that's an offshoot of certain Protestant uh, thinking and um, other kinds of things of that kind. Uh, so I mean, women were not in a totally equal free situation. So I'm not, I don't know what the situation is today. I wouldn't even want to comment on it. In any event, um, so originally I think that was a very uh, noble thing that empowered the individual to be his own. He could read the book himself. That's why you translated the book into what? Into the, into, into the languages that people spoke. So you didn't get a curia. What was... Maimon just talking about it. He was talking about the fact that the Jews have for a long time been run by what? Well, I don't want to call it a curia, but an aristocracy of rabbinic teachers who interpreted the word and that was that. And if you didn't know the languages that they knew and you weren't part of the, you know, clique or uh, coterie or fellowship that they enjoyed, you basically had to defer or uh, you were out. And I'm going to go back to Spinoza in a moment because he's, he's out, as we'll see, because he's kind of like a free thinker. In any event, um, so you have um, these people who are emphasizing the word as being infallible, and then you, you, you carry the book, and so they're the ones who interpret the word. They're not told how to interpret the word yet by organized bodies. Those come, may become later in the different Protestant groups. So that's a very um, invigorating, uh, heady kind of individualism that develops, starts off there. And that can give way then in the kind of thinking that you're talking about into other areas that is, that you start to think for yourself in these areas. People like Hobbes and others are already moving over there. And so what Hobbes is saying that uh, the world is a state of nature and so on, I think uh, Mendelssohn knows Hobbes. Uh, and so that develops into his and Rousseau's social contract theory. It's very famous. If you haven't heard of it, the next step is the social contract. I can't teach all the philosophy and history of uh, modern Jewish uh, uh, tradition and thought and so on. And what happened to the Jewish people in the last two or three centuries. But um, you see how this idea gets going. Now the American Declaration of Independence is a perfect social contract document. What does it say something like when governments are abusive of these rights? Something like that. People have the right to overturn them or something like that. Um, what's the actual language I can't read? Governments are instituted above among men to provide life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. When the governments become abusive of these rights, the people, you see it starts off with there are certain unalienable rights. <laughs> I think it says among these, it's a perfect document our life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. In France, it was called liberty, fraternity. egalité, fraternity. 
liberty, equality, brotherhood. I, I, you know, <laughs> I think the American was much more uh, uh, pioneering <laughs> pursuit of happiness. Get out of my way. <laughs> don't get in the way of my pursuit of happiness. I don't get in the way of your pursuit of happiness. But fraternity, I don't see any fraternity in that. <laughs> Pardon me for laughing. <laughs> I always uh, had a suspicion. You know, there's a certain Catholicism left in the in the French approach. You know, the solidarity of the church community, you know, the fraternity, if you like, of the brotherhood within the church, uh, and so on, of a common culture. But America had already abandoned that one and uh, had gone the way of independence, uh, you know, pioneer, frontier spirit, if you want to call it that. So, uh, and Jefferson, you know, lived on the edge of the frontier. That's where he lived out there in basically West Virginia was the frontier. He lived on the edge of the mountains there. And what ultimately became after where he was in Charlottesville, West Virginia. How many were familiar with that part of the country? Well, that's basically the mountains there, and that's where anything went, you know. Once you got beyond the mountains, nobody had control of you, you know. That's, that's the way it went. So, um, social contract is a, is a key um, part of this new theorizing that is expressed within the Declaration of Independence of the United States. So, the governments are there by the leave and permission of the government. They make a contract to give up their wild ways as long as the government uh, agrees not to abuse them. When the government, like you think Bush is abusing you, okay, then we got to change the government. Uh, maybe he is, I don't know. And now we're having the torture problem in America. Should we torture people who want to blow us up or shouldn't we? Uh, God, I don't have the answer to it, you know, I don't know what the right way to go on some of these issues are, but the point is, uh, these are still the same kind of issues. What is abusive? What is, what is uh, governments going beyond the, the, what's allowed them by the social contract, by the Declaration of Independence, if you want to, mm -hmm. want to call it that. And the social contract of the American government is embodied in the Constitution. The Constitution is adopted by the vote of the people. We the people, we the people, we're the arbiters, we the people, agree that these are, this is the contract. You follow me? So that's why, uh, you know, I, 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 again, I hate to keep going back to this problem. If people come to this country 